Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm delighted to be interviewing Dr. James Rogers, who is one of the founders and conveners of BISA's War Studies Working Group. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the group, its aim is to bring focus back onto war in all its forms as a phenomena in international studies. Um, welcome, James. Very nice to see you again. Thank you so much for inviting me on, Juliet. I mean, it's a very important time to be talking about war, sadly. Yes, well, precisely, yes. Um, so before we get on to that, I just wanted to um, express how incredibly active you are. Um, you are a full-time academic and associate professor in the Department of Political Science and Public Management at the University of Southern Denmark. Um, you are also an associate fellow at LSE Ideas, um, an advisor to the UK Parliament's all-party parliamentary group on drones and modern conflict a UK MOD defence opinion leader and an advisor to both NATO and the UN. Um, and on top of all of that, you're, you're also a, a presenter on the History Hit podcast series. And of course, as I've already mentioned, one of our co-conveners um, with Patrick uh, Burry of BISA's War Studies uh, group. I, I don't know how you managed to fit it all in, but um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit more and expand on these sort of different areas of research that you're engaged in. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't say they're completely different areas of research. I say they kind of dovetail off each other. Of course, there's the, the core kind of academic research. I focus and specialize in drone warfare, both the history of drone warfare going back to, to 1917. And I've got a book coming out next year called Precision, A History of American Warfare with Manchester University Press, and then all the way through to the future of drone warfare. And until recently, I held the position of the NATO country director of the vulnerabilities of the drone age project. And our, our latest report came out on that just a few months ago. So for me, I see drones as being a, a kind of ever present issue in, I suppose we could say, modern warfare from the 20th century through to the 20th first. And then once you've done that research and you think an issue is important and you're passionate about it, you want to bring that to the public's attention and to policymaker attention. And that's where I try and feed into those avenues of policy through the advisory positions and then broader kind of public dissemination through the podcasts and, and, and TV shows and, and so on and so forth. I think that it's our, our duty as academics to, to take that research and, and push it out there as far as possible. Wow, yes. So could you, um, I mean, absolutely, could you tell us a little bit more about the work you're doing with the Security Council of the UN? Yes, so th that was a, an interesting and, and kind of a unique opportunity to talk to the highest levels of, of policy making. I was invited by the UN Security Council to head to, to New York, to the United Nations headquarters, to discuss a, a really important personal issue, uh, and that is the, the transnational threat of drone use. We, we used to think of drones as being the, the panaceas to state security, the idea that the United States and Western allies would use drones to target terrorists. But the interesting and worrying thing is, is that we now live in a world that has been termed the second drone age, where drones are no longer in the hands of just Western allied nations, but they've proliferated to around 113 different state actors and over 65 non-state actors, who in their turn are using these drones and the precision missiles that drones fire, or what we call kamikaze or suicide drones that are, are bombs, missiles in their own right. Um, they're using them against Western and allied targets. So in, a, in an ironic twist of fate, perhaps one that was always predictable, the same drones and precision missiles that were used to protect nations are, are now used to attack the nations that were the first to use them. And so that's what we're trying to discuss at the United Nations Security Council, is the way we can start to, to stem the flow of the most high-tech drone technologies to hostile actors. And um, it is... Um, it's, I suppose, pertinent to say that as we're recording this, we're, we're just getting news that, that Russia has fired a, a number of Iranian-designed, Iranian-supplied drone systems onto Kiev, um, something which we can only see as not being a tactical or strategic weapon, but most certainly a, a terror weapon for the civilians of Ukraine. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, what a, what terrible news to, to come in today about that. And um, it's, uh, you know, the fact that you're looking into this with the Security Council is, of course, very, it's, it's very timely work, of course. Um, 
well, that's very interesting. Thank you. Perhaps we could just move on to, to talking about the Beast of War Studies um, uh, gr group. Um, I mean, you, you, you were one of the founders, you set up the group. I wondered whether you could, um, you know, uh, just explain a little bit more about its purpose and, and also tell us about the exciting things that you've com got coming up um, within the group. Um, that, that, would be, that would be very interesting. Well, it, it all came about in a in a pre-COVID world, um, sitting in a in a in a bar, I think, having a beer with me and Patrick, and discussing uh, the upcoming BISA conference that was happening at the time. And we were both placed onto onto panels, which we were very happy to be placed on, but that didn't quite fit with our kind of core war studies research um, area and agenda. And so we thought, well, that's because there isn't really a home for war studies at, at BISA. And so we thought, well, how do we make a home? Well, we create one. And so just before the world shut down, we, um, terrible timing, created BISA War Studies. And of course, the first conference was moved online, but we managed to really create an online community of scholars. And since that time, we've, we've tried to attract anybody who works on war. And this is really important to make clear. Anybody who works on war on conflict, on peace, on international security, all of the facets of war and peace are welcome, whether they study it throughout history from critical perspectives, looking to the future, looking in space, underwater, any aspect of the study of war are welcome to come and submit their papers to us because war by its very nature is an interdisciplinary topic. I sit within the Centre for War Studies at SDU in Denmark and in the Danish Institute for Advanced Study, both of which are interdisciplinary environments. We have poets and literary scholars. We have NATO analysts and engineers. We have historians. We have quantum physicists and mathematicians all working together on this tricky and perennial problem of on this tricky and perennial problem of human conflict and war. That was a tongue twister. So you can only study war if you look at it as an all-encompassing problem, a blight on humanity that affects every political, social and economic level. And that's how we see it. And that's how I want to continue pioneering the study of war within BISA War Studies. Well, that's really wonderful to know. And of course, you've increased the numbers of that group um, substantially since you since you since you founded it. And it's, it's doing extremely well. Um, what about we've got our conference coming up, Glasgow 2023. Uh, submissions are open. I think they close on the 14th of November. Um, I suppose, again, this is a call for all those people out there studying in all forms of water to submit through through through, through your track. Absolutely. And not just that, feel free to, to reach out to me and Patrick. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. My handle is at Dr. James Rogers. And of course, we have our, our own BISA War Studies Twitter at BISA War Studies. You can reach out to us on there or you can find my email address into the, the show notes of, of this recording. Click on it. Reach out if you want to pitch a panel, a roundtable, you want to put in an individual paper, you want to hold a special session, then please feel free to do so. Some of the things that we're looking to introduce in the near future, if you want to become a BISA War Studies member, is we're looking to introduce a BISA um, War Studies book prize. And we're also looking to have a, a set BISA um, address every year, where we have a key scholar, policymaker, practitioner come and talk about some of the key and most important issues within international security at this current time. Brilliant, James. That's so great. It's been so um, interesting to hear about the, the, the range of things that you're involved in, um, and obviously particularly interested to hear about the exciting things coming up in war study. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as James mentioned, uh, you can be in touch with, with him directly if you're interested in the war studies group or, or anything uh, else that he's talked about. Um, and if you have any practical issues about sub submitting, um, please get in touch with Bisa directly. So uh, with that, thank you very much, James. Thank you so much, Julia. I look forward to, to seeing you at BISA 2023 in Glasgow. Absolutely. Really looking forward to it. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.